Hi there folks and welcome to another video. In this one I thought I would dive into something else that I picked up recently and just have a little bit of a chat about it. So this is one of the Battle for Britain series that was done by Peter Dennis uh, that also featured rules by Andy Callan. Uh, this was published through Hellion and Company as you can see in the top there. And they've done a series of these, uh, but for obvious reasons, if you've been watching the channel over the last week or so, I decided that I was going to pick up the 1066 one. Now, these are the kind of things that I would have absolutely loved to have picked up, you know, donkeys years ago if I was heading off to a museum or something like that. Um, mainly because they provide you with lots of really interesting historical information, but also come with lots of interesting things for you to get crafty with and start building in terms of armies and all sorts of different things like that. Uh, apologies if you can hear my cat in the background, but there you go. Um, so this one is 1066, and it covers the Saxons, Vikings, and Normans, and it provides you with paper armies that you can use to replicate all of those different forces, um, whilst also providing you with easy rules, as you can see by Callum, and also some scenarios for you to play out as well. Uh, so we'll just have a little bit of a flick through. Here you can see some of the other options they've done. So there's the Roman Invasion one, which sounds pretty awesome, and the Civil War one as well, which is quite cool. Um, but yes, loads of cool stuff in here. So one of the main things with this is that it comes with a whole host of mini well miniatures. I say paper miniatures, as you can see here, which we'll look at in more detail in a second. But... Um, an important thing to do, and it's something that I um, very quickly looked at before I sort of dove in, was that you are not to cut the figures from this because of, otherwise you will end up cutting miniatures out from both sides and ruining it. You're meant to colour photocopy these or scan them and print them or something, depending on which you prefer to do. But there's a good down, uh, breakdown of how to make paper armies in here. There's a nice little selection of diagrams showing off how you actually build units and get them cut out essentially you're going to need some glue uh, maybe print stick or pva you're also going to need uh, some embroidery scissors or just some normal scissors if you haven't got those um, and and a little bit of card or something as well just for you to use to strengthen the bases of the miniatures as you're setting them up and things but essentially they just sort of fold over and they make awesome sets of warriors that you can use to fight in your games uh so you've got a nice little breakdown here of the different armies that you get to play as so you've got the uh the armies of the saxons at the bottom there the vikings and the Normans, so again, focusing on the year 1066. And then there's this absolutely astonishing selection of, I say, I guess, miniatures yeah, <laughs> in paper um, for you to print out and use in your games. So the scale of these, a little bit smaller than 28 mil, I'd say. 20 mil, maybe, 25. Um, but they all come with loads of bases and everything so you can get stuck into them so as you can see with this one for example uh you cut and you've got that side and that side of the model and then you just snap them together but obviously this all sort of concertinas together in a way to provide you with the ranks that you need in game which is kind of cool so as you can see there they've done with this one so you just cut the whole thing out and then you press it all together to create the army that you want to use. So what have we got here? Saxon Huskarls, some with Dane axes, some with spears, some with swords and axes as well. Then you've got the Fjord there as well. So there's your sort of regular infantry that we're using in your games. And obviously you've got loads of banners and everything as well here. So even if you're not going to use these for the paper craft game, I think getting some of these printed out in colour and using them to attach to your standards would be very, very cool to see. Got some shields, shield designs there as well. The Saxon Great Feared as well. So a few more models for that. And your archers. So when you want to rain down arrows on your enemies, you've got that option there, which is quite nice. And then some mounted warriors as well. So some of the Saxon um, knights or the Saxon mounted warriors that would have been fighting during that time as well. Sort of harassing the enemy, giving them a little bit of, a, of an advantage when it came to uh, fighting on the front lines against the Vikings and the Normans. 
maybe not necessarily against the Normans there, but there we go. <laughs> then we've got the um, Viking Lidang, which is your warrior class soldiers. Looking very nice in the command tokens as well. The Bondi, so your sort of rank and file Vikings that have been dragged along by their Jarls. Your archers and your command figures as well. So some cool figures there for making your own forces and again kind of mirroring up what the Saxons had. Then we've got Norman knights in all their splendidry. Charging forward, coated in mail, ready to smash into the enemy lines and draw the enemy forth from the top of the hill. And then you've got your Breton knights as well for the Norman army. Looking very cool. Slightly less well armoured. Norman Spearman, again with all these beautiful pieces of illustration from Peter Dennis. He's done an amazing job on these. Some gorgeous stuff there. And then your Norman archers. So these would have been your skirmishers fight, shooting from the back. But then you've also got the classic crossbowman, the Norman crossbowman that everybody knows. Um and is almost synonymous with the, the period and the fighting force. A lot of people remember the style of the helmet, the, the sort of teardrop shields and the crossbows of the uh, of the Normans. And then you've got your commanders here. So you've got your berserkers at the top. Uh, your Ulfhedna, who are sort of charging into battle with their axes at the ready. And then you've got Duke William, William the Bastard. Your Saxon Earls, Ori Eistein. King Harold, Tostig, the uh, Betrayer, and then Harold Hazrada there as well. So you've got all your leaders that you'd want for setting up fun games on the tabletop. And as you can see, just look at the detail in the artwork here. It's gorgeous. And even if you weren't going to be using these as a particular army, I think just having a look at them and just being, just having them, having access to these is great because it gives you some really cool ideas for painting as well, which is quite cool. You've got some civilians and some casualties and, and stuff at the back as well if you want to set up some interesting scenarios. Um, there's Talifer as well. <laughs> there's your thing for tracking the turns. And obviously the nice thing about this is that because you've bought the book, you've essentially got endless miniatures. Because much like what Peter does with Peter's Paper Boys, of which I'll link down below, you buy the sets and then you've essentially got the files to print off for life. So you can print as many armies as you like. You can scale things if you want to as well. There's even, and this is really cool, um, there's some terrain in here, some paper terrain. So you've got trees of different types which you, you score down the middle. You see like a score line there, you see? And then you mount them onto the base, which is kind of cool. Rivers. You know, even if you're playing with actual uh, plastic miniatures, having something like this to print out would be really cool to lay onto a tabletop because you could... Rather than having to create that in 3D and do resin pours or something like that, you could get away with doing some really awesome designs just using the paper terrain, marshy area, and little streams as well. So you've got streams for Fulford, for example, there too, and the marsh grasses for sneaking around it. Uh, some roofs for a variety of uh, cool buildings that your Dark Age warriors can use. Some huts. The classic kind of paper craft, so you've got the little tabs for building those, which is quite cool. Uh, and then you have some additional things like a bridge, a stamp bridge, and some ramparts. And there you go. And there's also a Viking ship as well, or a Dark Age ship, I should say. So you've got your long ship there with the base and everything. So you'll be able to create a really awesome scene uh, to go on the mantelpiece or using battle, of course. And you've got your paper crewman there as well, which is cool. And then there's a set of wargaming rules. So uh, the wargaming rules by Callan are fairly simple to get your head around. Uh, a lot of it is just, uh, sort of designated by sectors and 
issuing commands to sectors. Um, and then all the combat is D6 based, which is kind of cool. Uh, you sort of roll D6 depending uh, depending on well the 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 sectors, and then you assign points to them, and you can spend those to march forward, attack, and everything between. There are lots of sort of different ways that particular characters fight. Well, not characters. Uh, particular armies fight. So the Saxons fight slightly differently from the Vikings, and again, slightly differently from the Normans as well which is kind of cool. Um, there's a really nice... While the this might feel a little bit daunting to new people diving into, into wargaming, a lot of it is sort of going through the explanation of things, but the actual basics of how to play is actually quite simple. One, there's a nice little breakdown here which sort of talks about uh, sort of a, a turn being played out, which is quite good. And then there's also... Uh, some interesting little box outs talking about outflanking, which is a really key part of this and how it works. But um, I would say one of the best things to do is to have a look at the play sheet because that's a great sort of guide. And then at the back of the book, there is this, which is your starter game. So this tells you what armies to make for the Saxons and the Vikings. It tells you about your setup. You essentially play with two of these boards that you've um, photocopied uh, and then you basically just use this sort of breakdown of how to fight so as you can see there combat nice and simple uh, the, depending on the units you roll a certain amount of dice five and six is a hits and then as you can see at the top there you roll to defend and if a uh, block is damaged then it is sort of removed or pushed back and then you can move up into different spaces so it's all about sort of taking space um, if you've looked at Games like Battle Raven, which is a, a board game that was done by uh, PSC Games, uh, that will give you an idea of sort of the, the focus of this kind of game. And as I say, there's scenarios for um, Fulford Gate there. So you've got that first fight, followed by a couple of additional ones. So you've got Stamford Bridge to play out there. And then finally... Hastings and everything that you need marshy ground woods the roads everything has been uh, designed as part of this book so you can essentially play everything from that year in this book uh, on the tabletop which is really cool um, so yeah it's it's one of these that's a little bit of a weird one because a lot of people will be really focused on the idea of playing with plastic miniatures and stuff um, but even if you are playing with plastic miniatures, maybe in sort of smaller scales, I think this set of rules is actually quite good for Dark Age combat. It's fairly simple to get your head around after a while. Um, I won't go into too much detail because, you know, read this and buy it yourself. You can buy it yourself and have a read of it. But um, it's 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 very interesting. It's got there's, – there's other rules out there that have done similar things like Age of Pender, uh, which is Daniel Mersey's game. Um, so it's definitely worth having a look at this and seeing what you think. Um, I would dive in and give this one a shot. Um, yeah, if you if you can get this, make sure to go and give it uh, a look on Amazon or something. I'll put a link down below. There's no sponsor or anything, but it'll be really cool to see if people go and have a look at this and, and add it to their collection. Make sure to comment, share, like, do all that good stuff down below. Um, I love hearing what you guys think. Have you tried paper crafting? I'm going to put some links down below to the rest of Peter Dennis's range and also uh, a company called Wofen who does plastic versions of these kind of miniatures or plastic standees representing Peter Dennis's art for you to use in games like this. Um, so yeah, and he's, they've also worked with Andy Callum in order to create some interesting roles. But anyway, um, definitely go and have a look at this. Tell me what you think. Uh, and I will be getting ready for another video. I've got lots of Dark Age terrain to build, so that might be the focus of next week's video. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.